Welcome to the Transform Sales Podcast, where forward-thinking business leaders come to share their experiences and ideas, learn from each other, and amplify their results together. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Software Review Podcast, part of the Transform Pod- Sales Podcast series. The Sales Software Reviews Podcast is like a fun tech show, all about tools that help people sell stuff better. We talk to leaders of software brands about what's good or not so good about their products, so you can get the information you need to pick the best tool for your company. Today, we have as our guest, Mark Troy from Union Resolute. How's it going, Mark? Good. How are you, Tony? Doing well. Thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So let's start off. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get it started, Mark. We have, um, you have a product out and what's the name of the software product you want to share with us today? We launched a product called CallSign and this essentially empowers sales teams and individuals to reach uh, their prospect database while developing these incredibly individualized emails for each recipient. Nice. Okay. So who's your ideal, uh, who's the, your ideal customer for the software product? Any company that is B2B driven uh, in any industry really can use this. Um, the employee count doesn't matter. They just have to have a salesperson or a sales team that is looking to get engaging with their prospects one-to-one using a technology like our platform. And currently it's English speaking markets only. Okay. Good deal. And then what does your software help users do today that they couldn't do before your software existed? Sure. So before call sign, uh, people had an issue getting emails out at an individual, uh, individual level to the recipient. So the issue was they had to send an email one at a time or sequencing. And with that, you can't send at scale one email at a time to a prospect. It's impossible because you just don't get the volume you need in order to hit your numbers. The individual can now send emails to hundreds, if not thousands of people at a time using AI software we embedded in the product to ensure that each email is individual to the recipient. It's an incredible uh, uh, feat that we pulled off here, I think, quality wise. Nice. So what are you seeing out there in the market right now relative to products like this? Is there's a lot of different AI products coming out. It's the it's uh, been around for a while. Right. But it's the new buzz. So there are a lot of yeah. uh, competitors coming out. Have you what have you seen out there among folks that are claiming to do the same thing as what call sign does? Well, what we've seen is people can actually do put AI into their email creation, whether it's individual using chat GPT or other sources. Um, but the issue is you got to really create a large language model, a machine learning connection to the AI in order to train it to do what it needs to do properly for you. Uh, there are a lot of horror stories out there about AI going out and creating content that is not monitored. It can get wild and it can get actually pretty hairy. Um, so ours is really training it to do things and not do things in order to create these individual emails and understanding who the recipient is, but also ensuring it doesn't go into other areas uh, to great grab content and put it into the emails unless our machine learning tells that it can do so. It's a, it's a very important distinction between the two. So when the machine learning is working in call sign, is it learning more about what the recipient wants to see by using a bunch of data from a bunch of different recipients, like what people respond to and open up? Or is it um, learning more about like my voice as an example, mm, so that it engages them in the way I would? Great question. So the AI does two things and we'll back up a bit and then we can show you uh, the product in a few here. But the first thing you have to do is inform it about what you're selling. So that's important. And we have a drag and drop feature where you can bring anything in marketing and sales material wise and it will learn about you. And AI is interesting. Uh, The more it it has and more time it has and the more information it has, the better it can be. However, you want to make sure you're careful as to what you're putting in there because you want it to understand what you're selling. For example, if you sell 10 products, but you only want to have a sequence of emails going out for one product, you have to inform it about that one product, not all 10. The other side is very, very important. The machine learning we created uh, is something called a playbook. So you can go in and inform the AI about the recipient and the company. So that allows you to say, now I can send emails using prompts in a playbook that's very simple to set up. That allows the AI to go out there and grab information about that person, if available, and the company. So then it can create that connective tissue between you as a company and the individual that is getting the email. That's the connective tissue. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, look, that's a nice lead into the demo. Before we hop to the demo, why don't we go ahead and uh, would you give us a little idea of how people who buy call signs should measure the success or the improvement that they have from baseline with your product? Well, one major is you're getting a lot of time back. So these, let's say you put 500 contacts in, it'll create sequences of 10 emails per contact. This is now gaining hundreds of hours of back for individual emails if you were to write them yourself. Mm. If you were to use GPT to send emails as well, you would be using GPT to create emails and you've got to customize those emails for the individual. Otherwise, it is just another sequence of emails of the same email going to the uh, entire database. So you're getting a ton of time back. And the second, and just as important, is the engagement is higher. You're getting an individual email looks like I wrote it to you. And if I wrote it to you, I'm going to make it personalized enough to say, hey, Tony, here's why I have an apple. And I know you like fruit. I'd like to show you our apple. And if you individualize that email and personalize it, you're going to get someone interested, likely at a higher level. So higher open rates, replies, and click-throughs for sure. Got it. Okay. So the amount of time it takes to actually finish creating, a, let's call it a catalog, a few varieties of personalized emails that you could send out. Exactly. And I'm guessing if you if it's creating, if Callsign is creating 10 at one shot, Maybe the idea is that you could put them into a sequence so that it's not just doing the first touch email, but maybe that 10 is first touch, second touch, follow up, follow up, follow up. 100%. And rush out. Okay, so tons Correct. of time saved there. And then the quality measure would be if one buys call sign, they would be looking for an improvement in their open rates, their click through rates and their website visits or whatever that next step is that they're sending, uh, or I'm sorry, reply rates, reply yes. rates to their emails as an indicator that they're in fact getting the value that they expect out of call sign. Very much so, very much so. Now, every industry is different and every uh, individual salesperson is different, but the software, when trained, will learn about the person sending, will learn about the recipients, and you can test the prompt. So this allows a sales rep Let's say, let's say is using a sales loft and Apollo and outreach. They can't do that with those software platforms. They can with ours. And it's meant to be very simple. What you put in, then what you get out, and then you get that time back so that you can actually go out, do your other day-to-day -day selling duties and let the system work for you as if you were writing the emails yourself. Sounds, sounds, sounds impressive. Sounds interesting. Let's hop into that demo. Sure. You share your screen and see what it really looks like under the hood. Absolutely. Let me know when you can see my screen. Got you. Not to say this is just a demo, so you're not going to see actual live data because we have to be careful there. But let me show you how it works. So I, as the sales rep, have loaded 500 contacts into this database. CSV, it's in. Now what I've done is I've added data through a drag and drop mechanism where very simply put, you can drag any file or website in here that you want, and the AI now is informed about what you're selling. Again, to my point earlier, you have to be careful what you put in here because you don't necessarily want to throw everything in there if you want a specific type of message. However, if you want everything in there because it's going to help the AI sell your product more effectively, then you put it in. So it really depends on what you're selling and to whom, but ultimately very easy, drag and drop and put it in. Now, that is the AI learning about your product and your offering. The other side let is, let's a, say let I want to ask, a, oh, go ahead, ask a quick question right there on that data. So that part, um, that part about learning about the offer, the data that's in there is you put in the website or any other materials that are part of your sales messaging. And it's right. literally going to extract that from PDFs, DocX, Correct. documents, all of that. Okay. Spreadsheets, uh, knowledge bases, J any type of file, JSON, XML, XLS, uh, PDF, PowerPoint. Very, very straightforward stuff here. So if you have some materials, this is a great tool. If you have a website and, and maybe a, a brochure and that's it, this still will work incredibly well. So yes, it's that simple. So you would be able to upload the website address in here as well and pull from it or only, yeah. only kind of file document files? No, absolutely. Public domain websites that are out there. Yes. Absolutely. Whether, oh, sweet. Could you, could you show us whether that seen or, or non uh, your hidden websites, as long as they're in the public domain, yes, it can, it can put them in. So what, you click on add data and then just type in your website address? Correct. In that case? Yep. Yep. Could you show it to exactly. us real quick? Throwcloudcast.com is an example. 
uh, you would drag a file with the URLs in it. So it would be a spreadsheet or something like that. Ah, got it. Okay. Yep. Even All more right. simple. Yep. All right. Cool. Good question, Tony. Thank you. Yeah. So the other side is now creating the actual prompts. And we call them prompts because most people know that from AI. Essentially, it's a playbook in our world because our technology has allowed people to shape the messaging in a very simple way without having to know any code. And that's us doing our job on the back end to ensure as if putting someone out in the world and pointing them and say, go get me uh, a rock. Well, that's what that's what AI does. If you get it out in the world, it's going to go out there and it may bring you back a brick and it may bring it in three weeks. If you tell the person to go out there, AI again, and say, OK, I'd like you to go within this area to these places to find this type of rock, come back with that by 5 p.m. So our, our system is allowing the AI to say, I know what I can and can't do, but I'm smart enough to go out there and learn a lot along the way. So for example, I've selected all 500 here. I go into my playbook that I've created. I can't show that to you today on this call that's because that's uh, a little behind the scenes here, but I've created these playbooks. And once I've created them, this is the AI being informed about what to go after. And I'll show you an example here with Gene. So Gene, it created 10 email set. Here's the best example I can show relative to a formal email versus a conversational email. Now, remember, AI can start to learn about how you communicate. In this case, though, this is a formal email talking about Gene. The prompts created a playbook that was as simple as this. Go to press releases, blog posts, and the public website and find information about Gene, if available, to talk about Gene specifically. It found a press release where Gene spearheaded Ingram Micro's application for AWS Premier Tier Services Partner, and they got it a very big deal for Ingram Micro. Then it went and said, at Union, we have AWS specific expertise. We can help you sell this. So in this case, we are dealing with an email specifically to Gene that looks like I sat there and wrote it myself. Hmm. Nice. And there's 10 emails there. I'm kind of, it cuts off the sidebar. So there are Yes, yeah, so we've got 10 emails set again. These are all drafts here for this okay. demo, but it creates 10 of them as a follow-up sequence as if you were writing them yourself in order with follow-up inline replies. And that allows now you as a salesperson have 500 times 10 that are all individual emails to the recipient. So question Everything. for you, when, when that happens, um, is it doing subject lines as well? And is it doing like fresh subject lines or is it doing one of those, you know, those janky re colon subject lines that people do or is it just depend on the playbook if you it, it depends on the playbook it depends yeah. on how you sell too so you want to be careful in that you don't want it to look like this is too polished sometimes mm -hmm. what i mean by that is people do in rhyme inline rep replies they do the re colon they do they do sell in different ways so this allows that flexibility for you to create certain types of sequencing. But remember that sequencing is individualized and you can adjust it if you'd like to. You can create different playbooks. You can have one or a hundred playbooks. You can also edit the emails yourself if you choose to spot check a few and say, I'd like to change this and change this when I know this guy a little better and I wanna get in there so I wanna adjust it. But the good thing about it is as much time as you have to spend here, you're still getting an incredible amount of time back. So it's meant to be very simple easy to use, and then you can customize as you go, uh, leveraging the AI and the, the playbooks. So it sounds like there's also one other thing then for, for team leaders or sales organizations that are looking to improve their consistency, their, their sales messaging or sales process consistency. This would come in as a helpful tool, definitely when it comes to email outreach, because then whatever playbook you created, you put it into the system, everybody would essentially be creating their emails and everything off of that playbook. So the probability of being aligned is higher, but they still have the flexibility to do individual tweaks. hundred percent. After the, after call sign pumps out whatever output uh, for the emails. Correct. And the big uh, thing we tell people is the law of diminishing return. Be careful not to make this something that you really spend a ton of time in. You spend mm -hmm. the time in the setup, and the education and likely uh, over time, the evolution of the type of playbooks you create and the type of uh, time you spend in here for those things versus looking at the specific emails. Yes, you should. Yes, you should spot check your test and play and look at it, but it is meant to be 
time back and an increased efficiency of deliverability, open rates, et cetera. Because ultimately sales reps want to sell, they don't want to administer and spend time on using tools and data. They don't want to do that. No, and I don't, none of us do. Yeah. So it sounds like the magic, the, the, you know, the anchor here, the foundation of everything here ends up being the playbook. But you mentioned we won't be able to take a look at how setting up a playbook looks or you know, in, in the demo right now. We can't do that now, but we can do that for individuals because essentially setting up a playbook is showing you a little bit behind the curtain of how it operates. And we're doing that with trials now. So people can come in and test this and play with it with no obligation. So for anyone interested, they certainly can come in and, and take a look at it and play with it for seven days, see what it does, actually create the emails. And it's pretty okay. fascinating stuff. All right. So then let's pivot on that one. Curious about the setup time, right? So let's imagine someone gets in there, they get the seven day trial. The assumption is they're able to upload their own playbook, but there's right. also playbooks in there that they can use that you all have already uploaded. Correct. We have some test playbooks they can look at for sure and see how they work. But ultimately you want your own playbook because it's going to resonate with the content you're creating for yourself. So our playbooks are sample playbooks just to show how it works. We specifically mm -hmm. in the trial set everyone up with their own playbook to show them this is how you do it yourself and how it relates to your content. So that's important mm -hmm. because our playbooks don't align with the specific selling of uh, a specific company's offering. It's impossible to do. You have to really cater that playbook to what you're selling. Cool deal. So let's talk a little bit about playbook then as we wrap this up. Uh, conceptually, right? Because um, I think there, there's there's two sides of this coin, right? A lot of times people are like, well, you know, you, your company may be unique. So we want to make it so that you could provide a playbook. But in the business we're in, um, working with clients that uh, are looking for help generating leads and, 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 and meetings, uh, oftentimes we find that they actually don't have any secret sauce and are looking for help creating that secret sauce. Mm -hmm. When they think about playbook in the context of call sign, could we dig a little bit deeper into what that actually means so that some folks might be able to prepare for that before trying a trial? Absolutely. So when you think of a playbook, it's essentially what is it you want to say to the recipients about you? So when you have the data back to here, what we've loaded in, that's the fodder that's leveraged to connect what it is you're selling to the end, end user. But the end user here, everyone's different. Every individual is different. So what you wanna do is ensure the playbook will go out and find information about 500 people. It's very difficult to say everyone's gonna get the same type of information. You're creating a, a playbook that shows the ML and the AI where to go and what to do with a lot of if-then statements, so to speak. because these large language models are enormous and you have to guide so that the playbook allows you to get some information that you know would be interesting to the recipient about them related to you. So when you're doing that, it's, it really comes back to who are you selling to? What's your ideal customer profile look like? And what do you want them to react to? And that's where playbooks come into play because the strategy for how you sell your product or service is your own. The playbook is meant to connect to that. And then the individual rep is meant to connect to them over time where you teach it about how your language operates. So think of it this way. It's, it's literally training the, the robot how to really think about you as a person, the end uh, person you're sending to, and the data about your product. And that takes time, but the playbooks can be very intricate or very, very simple. It comes down to how do you actually sell your product or service, train the AI to help you do that. So then the most basic way for someone to get started let's say they were an early stage company they hadn't done outbound before uh and they're like hey this might be a useful tool for me what do i need to get started you need to at least pick say for example uh i'm selling my product are you selling to financial leaders do those financial leaders would you tell them a different message or story about your product in order to engage them yes all right create the script for some emails or at least provide, hey, this is a financial leader. It's going to be a um, CFO, not a manager of finance, right? And these are the things we want to say about our product or these are the benefits 
the problems that they face and the benefits our product creates for them, as an example. It With something that simple, then they would be able to put that in and maybe create a playbook or have enough for the playbook that there's that the AI can create the the the, the, the messaging for them, the script. One hundred percent. So they don't have to go as far as being like actually sample scripts of saying like, hello, comma. And, you know, like when we do personalization at CRM or something like that, they don't even have to go that far. They just need to give the basics. The basics, it's building blocks because the AI knows how to write. When you play with GPT, even 3X that's unpaid, it's pretty cool to play with, right? It's neat. And for those that haven't played with it, try it. It's interesting to see what it does. But it's not going to give you that level of specificity against something like this year. When you look at an ideal customer profile, you look mm -hmm. at the size and nature of the companies you're going after and the decision makers and the technographic data. When yep. you bring that all into call sign, this is you knowing who you're selling to and generally speaking, what is going to get them interested. Now, the AI's job is to take that to the personal level and bring that building block, if you will, down to Gene. That's the value prop here because... If I was selling to you, Tony, I would want to write an email specific to you. And that's very hard to do uh, at scale at my desk, sitting here at a keyboard, even with GPT, even with AI. This allows it to train the AI how to get after the market connection to Tony about Union Resolute and my product offering. That's what's interesting about this. And it is that, like you said, building blocks. Give it guidelines, but don't tell it exactly what to do because it's going to learn. That's what's fascinating about this stuff right now. And this is the, the cutting edge of it right now. We are just at the beginning of it. You're going to see so much happen over the next five years. It's incredible. So last question. If, if someone's dealing with a team, uh, there are multiple reps in the call sign account. What does it look like when we maybe look at a performance? Are we able to look at a performance dashboard such that we can decide what's the next experiment to run as we're learning more about what kind of copy works best with our audience if there were more than one person would how, how easy is that to do so that's an interesting uh question because ultimately that's like a b testing right in a way you yeah. can't a b test individualized emails right you can't yeah. say that the that's what you can test a playbook against a playbook and kind of play around with them and see how well they perform but mm -hmm. we're not dealing with a b testing of emails because every single one is different so if you were send, sending an email to 500 people and a separate template to 500 other people, mm -hmm. you can test that. In this, it takes A-B testing out of the equation. You don't need to. What you need to do is create playbooks and test the playbooks and see how well those work. That's what's interesting about this. It's not about messaging per se because the messaging is individualized. So it's, it's almost like you head focus, around a little bit. It's almost like you focus on improving your prompts right. instead of, hey, let's see what subject line and intro t uh, copy and different things of that nature, the tool made for us on the email, and let's see about picking a winner there and re and reiterating on that or and iterating on that. Instead, yeah. you're you're like, well, what prompts led to these, or what did the outcomes look like? And based on those outcomes, let's try something different on our playbook. So you A/B test a playbook rather than the actual email. Exactly, and you think about what A/B testing it, it's literally in the rearview mirror now because what you're doing is you're you're testing ai's ability to learn versus the actual subject matter the actual subject line and the content because you no longer are worried about that this is moving so quickly that you're able to then hone in the playbooks over time versus worrying about the, what the emails actually say that's what's fascinating here is ab testing is it's now in the rearview mirror as we see it all right. Well, there you go. Well, thank you very much, Mark. So we've got call sign. There's a seven day trial av available. Uh, this helps people improve the speed and the quality at which they do outreach to massive numbers of prospects to increase their chances of getting in touch, building a relationship that could lead to sales. Anything else that you would tell somebody that's on the fence that's listening, but on the fence right now as to whether they want to try out that seven day trial i would say it can't hurt to look at something like this you're looking at ai now you're looking at uh other platforms and data sets it's it might be worth uh trying just to see if what we say here is true because ultimately it works it's worth so it we got nothing to lose 
Nothing to lose. Seven day, no pain guarantee. <laughs> no obligation. We don't take credit cards, none of that. You just try it and tell us if you like it. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. Once again, guys, call sign, email tool using the power of AI to help you be more productive. Talk to you soon on the next, uh, catch you on the next episode. Ciao.